The gentleman from Illinois is recognized for three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank the gentleman for yielding. Um, my home state is Illinois, and the state of Illinois, Mr. Speaker, is a delightful place. It's the land of Lincoln, the birthplace of Ronald Reagan, but it is a fiscal basket case. My home state is a national punchline from a fiscal point of view because one party, the other party, has dominated state government for years, decade they've had the governor's mansion, they've got majorities in both the Illinois House and the Illinois Senate, and what has happened? It has been avoidance behavior, Mr. Speaker, an unwillingness to take on serious issues. So what did the Democrats in Springfield, Illinois do? They raised taxes, didn't deal with the underlying fiscal problem, and what was the net result? The budget gap didn't close, higher than average unemployment, and now a, uh, you know, it, 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 more per capita debt nearly than any other state in the union on the taxpayers of Illinois. All right, so what does that all have to do with this? Springfield, Illinois is a foreshadowing, Mr. Speaker, of what not to do. Basically, we need to look at the fiscal situation in Springfield, Illinois, and look at it like a big, big traffic signal that says, don't come here, don't go this route, don't take this pathway. Instead, go another direction. And the direction that we need to go is a direction that the chairman has articulated and that I think a majority is going to vote for tomorrow. And it's a, it's a pathway that says, let's look clearly at these difficulties. Let's articulate them clearly. Let's be clear-eyed about what they are. And let's make decisions. So what does this budget do? The budget repeals Obamacare and makes way for a patient-centered approach on health care that our constituencies are calling out for. It says that we're going to empower states to make decisions. It says we're going to keep promises that are going to be made, not false promises, not telling folks that something is going to be there and then just assuming that there's going to be some pixie dust that makes these problems go away. But no, it says no, these problems are going to be dealt with and they're going to be dealt with in a forthright manner. I think we're at an inflection point. I think the House is actually at an incredibly important stage right now, and we can go one of two pathways. One pathway we know. One pathway of more taxes, more spending, more avoidance, and not dealing with the underlying spending programs. This is not theoretical, Mr. Speaker. The state of Illinois has tried that, and it is a mess. And it's a mess that becomes worse. The longer the state waits, the worse the options are. And so what the chairman is saying is let's not get to that point. We've got options. We've got time. We've got choices. We've got remedies. But we need to act now. So I urge favorable consideration of this budget, and I yield back the balance of my time.